look at all this gear. Look at this thing, for example. I mean, this is the real deal. And it's much harder than it looks. I mean, to get out in front of the camera, when you first start doing it, you kind of freeze a little bit. Well, there are a lot of retakes and a lot of shoots. So, you know, try and try again. But I think I got it right eventually. I now have so much respect for people who are on TV. Um, you have to memorize lines in three seconds. Um, everything seems awkward. Yeah, I mean, I'm an, a genuine industrial designer. I'm not a TV guy. I winged it. No, I didn't really wing it, but I really learned about each story, about each innovator. Uh, that helped me showcase each product and speak about them. You know, I think the greatest value of this show is that it's not just a bunch of designers standing around rubbing elbows. We're actually reaching the masses, real people that are now learning about design instead of just our fellow designers. Oh, mom and dad, of course, had to see me on TV, my wife, friends. Well, I'm just walking down the street in my Brooklyn neighborhood and my neighbor next door says, Scott, I saw you on TV. Well, a lot of friends thought I look good on TV, so that's a plus. <laughs> well, I'm far from a TV star, but you know, little by little, we'll take season one as a stepping stone and go from there. You know, I'm not someone who I consider camera friendly. Um, I've never done this, but what I am passionate about is sharing the stories of, of entrepreneurs, innovators and designers doing amazing, amazing things. So I will embarrass myself happily uh, for that cause. <laughs> I would say that, you know, uh, since the industrial age, there's never been a better time to be a designer uh, because it's needed. And I always talk about working towards a need. Everybody needs design right now because everything's changed. The subways are empty. How are they getting to work, right? The streets aren't crowded. The restaurants aren't crowded, they're, you're, 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 but they're getting food at home. We don't know if they're gonna sleep later, get up earlier. We don't know if they're dying to get back in the office or they're dying to work from home. They don't know what the hybrid model is. Do you want walls around your desk or do you want free airflow? You know, do you want to wear a mask all the time or do you want to have an electronic something that, that blocks the air? We don't know anything about the new world uh, worker. Whether it's me, you, or the guy digging a ditch, our habits have changed. What are they? The only way to figure that out is to launch design after design after design to try to meet the needs of the new consumer and we don't know what they are. That's gotta be the definition of innovation, right? And fearlessness and we'll fight for that. Something that floats my boat is something that fixes a problem, right? Uh, design for design's sake is all ego. Design for a purpose is true design. If you can identify a problem, be the first to fix it, or be the second to fix it better, I think that's quite interesting. You know, I went on the subway, and uh, I used to hate the subway card. Now I can do it with Apple Pay. Like, that's the best thing that ever happened. Who did that? I'm okay with it. And if you can make somebody's life a hair better, provide a hair more beauty, make things a bit easier, I'd like to be a part of that. I do want people in their homes to realize that everything they look at, everything they sit on, everything they touch has been designed by somebody somewhere. And they should be thinking to themselves, could it have been designed better? If my life had gone differently, would I have designed it? What would I do to make it better? And once you start people thinking in that way, innovation is born on the couch. Right? And there is no limit in this country. You can do whatever you want to do. Between the internet and uh, virtual reality and uh, 3D printing, you can be the designer. Why not? We want to inspire you. We want you to fall in love with the people that we show, but also fall in love with your own talents and maybe you'll be on the show. We at Salesforce are inspired by America by Design. We love that you're explaining design, not in a highbrow sort of intellectual way, but you're actually grounding it in ways that I could even help my mom understand. And trust me, it's taken me years to help my mom understand what I do. And I think most people don't realize that you yourselves are designers, which is really great. And it's why you bring so much care and passion and craft to telling these stories. And at Salesforce, we want to take complex technology and actually make it completely simple and approachable for the every person. It's that same idea. Make the complex simple, take it out of the ivory tower, and enable everyone to have access and opportunity. The stories you told last time were fantastic, and they kind of opened the door for people to see the invisible stuff. And, and that's important to us, because there's a lot of people who do a lot of work to do good in the world, and it's not always visible. People should know the craft and care that goes into helping them live a better life. We think that design is a practice that should be open to everyone and accessible by everyone. And what we love about America by Design is that it actually shows design not in an elitist way, but in a way that's accessible, that excites, I hope, the next generation of designers who are watching your show.
Salesforce is focused on the sustainable development goals that are signed on by countries worldwide. Um, we're building uh, huge products in our .org to support philanthropy, education, and giving back. It couldn't be more aligned with our goals as a company. Well, America by Design offers a chance for us to connect in a rare way to these other very senior leaders across different industries who have great experience of their own. And this is a job where the learning is never done. So the opportunity to learn from my peers, well, it's such a privilege, right? It's a global community, and yet we're all so busy all the time that we rarely actually get to have an intimate moment of interaction or to celebrate each other's work in a personal way. So it's so great to be around all these other talented and gifted professionals. In season two, as a judge, I'm definitely gonna be looking at products and services that are on the show to demonstrate a care for people and for the earth and the social fabric that's kind of created between those two things to build community. Design should be accessible to everyone because it's a chance to change the world for the better.